Sit down, please, Mr. Blair. I mean, yeah, this is outrageous. Take me outrageous. <laughs> Mr. Blair, your plane had to make an emergency landing in Harare in Zimbabwe, and police were told to arrest you for war crimes and crimes against humanity. I want more Jana. Where's more Jana? It's more Jana here. I need more Jana. Mr. Blair. Blair. You know, I mean, this is an outrage. Africans don't try Europeans. It's always the other way around. <laughs> Mr. Blair. It was held at the Nuremberg trial of leading Nazis after World War II that to initiate a war of aggression is not only an international crime, it is the supreme international crime. When you were British Prime Minister, you launched not just one, but three wars of aggression against sovereign states. More than one million people have lost their lives in the conflicts you helped to start. How do you plead? I want more Jana! Mr. Blair, <laughs> let us start with Yugoslavia. In 1999, you were the head of the British government, which illegally invaded the Federal Republic. There was no United Nations Security Council resolution authorizing military action, and NATO was not acting in self-defense. The only two ways a law can be legal under international law. You claimed that Yugoslav forces were committing genocide in Kosovo, a claim which was not true. What do you say in your defense? It was not a war. It was a humanitarian intervention. You silly African person. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, okay, so we bomb passenger trains, we bomb television studios and stations, you know, we bomb co convoys across the Albanians. But, but we did it with pure hearts. <laughs> <laughs> because we wanted to save people's lives. You know, we were killing people in order to save their souls. Don't you understand that, Mr. Tiki? <laughs> Mr. Blair, that does not constitute a legal argument. Many have said that the war was an imperialist project to topple a socialist government and obtain economic control of an independent, independent strategically important European country. What do you say to this charge? You know, I mean, I mean, you know, you know, I mean, look, look, I mean, you know, I mean, look, I mean, you know, the fact is we wanted, to, you know, the fact that we wanted to change the socially owned Yugoslav economy into an economy that was fully open to Western finance capital. You know, I mean, that had absolutely nothing to do with our intervention. You know, it was totally altruistic. Another important point, and, I, and again, I really want to stress this, is that we, Britain, the US, and our allies, you know, have the absolute right to intervene in other countries, because we're the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, you know, don't you understand that? I mean, you know, international law only applies to our enemies. <laughs> Mr. Blair. If you were so concerned about saving people's lives, why didn't you intervene in Lebanon against Israel? when they were bombing them. You know, you African did what? You know, you know, Israel only ever carries out anti-terrorist operations. You know, if people fire rockets at Israel, even if they don't kill or injure anyone, Israel is perfectly justified in killing thousands of people in response. I mean, you know, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, you know, I mean, you know, to compare Israel's government with the Yugoslav government in 1999, well, I mean, you know, it, it's frankly, well, it's, it's anti-Semitism. <laughs> you know, I mean, hang on, you, you, you must be an extremist. <laughs> I've got a new job looking out for people like you. Mr. Blair, in 2001, your government took part in another invasion, this time of Afghanistan. Again, hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives. How do you defend this war? But it was a fantastic success. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, I mean, you know, we re-established the supply line of one of Europe's major industries, the heroin trade. <laughs> you know, I mean, that wasn't enough. We also helped to boost the cause of Al Qaeda, but you know, which was, a, you know, so that ten years after, you know, the invasion, it was, it was in a much stronger position than it was before. Uh, and that's what we wanted because we wanted to use Al Qaeda to topple, you know, uh, you know, you know, these secular independent governments in the Middle East. Which we want to topple, you know. So, and then if you added the profits that made for the arms industry, you know, what's there not to like about it? Uh, you know, I really don't understand your objections. Mr. Blair, less than two years after Afghanistan, you played a leading role in the illegal invasion of Iraq. In the run up to the invasion, you repeatedly claimed that Iraq possessed WMDs. It was not true. Again, why did you lie? I mean, you know, you know invading Iraq was the right thing to do. You know, I mean, we liberated yeah. the Iraqi people from a, you know, the clutches of an evil tyrant who we had supported for many, many years. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a bulwark against Al-Qaeda. 
And, you know, to say that the very big spike in violence in Iraq, you know, in 2004 and 5, was in any way connected to our humanitarian intervention in 2003, you know, that's absolutely ludicrous. Uh, you know, we weren't to blame for the violence which occurred post invasion, it was the Iranians. <laughs> because they were interfering in the, uh, you know, in the affairs of a sovereign nation. Uh, you know, it's because of the Iranian interference in that region that we need to seriously consider now military action, you know, against Tehran. We cannot, and I mean, you know, this cannot be stressed enough, we cannot allow them to develop weapons of mass destruction. You know, I mean, you know, the nuclear threat from Iran is the biggest threat, you know, that we all face, the world faces at this moment, and it's why we can't just sit back and do nothing. Because, you know, you know, you know, I mean, you know, you know, you know, it's very easy, isn't it, you know, to sit back and do nothing. I could have sat back and done nothing in 2002 and 2003 with Iraq. And what would have happened then, you know? I mean, just think, just think what the Middle East would be like today if we had done nothing in 2002. <laughs> Absolutely uh, awful. I mean, secular independent governments that didn't carry out to the US or Israel would still be in power. Mr. Blair, it has been estimated that your personal fortune stands at around 20 million pounds. You've received money and very lucrative jobs from companies and countries which have directly benefited from your wars. What do you say to those people who accuse you of profiting from war, of becoming fabulously rich, from over one million people being killed? You know, I'd say, get a life, you envious bastards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, look, 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 I mean, look, 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 the only people making those claims are, are, you know, bitter, twisted people, you know, who are unhappy that they weren't they weren't the ones to liberate Afghanistan and Iraq and bring peace to the Middle East, like I've done, you know. I got there first, because I was aspirational. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I think we've heard enough. You have heard the evidence. What is your verdict? Is Mr. Blair guilty or not guilty? Yes. 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 and crimes against humanity. Is there anything you would like to say? I think this is extremism. This is an example of extremism. And I want to see Lord Janet. <laughs> Do you have anything else to say? No, I don't. And, you know, it's absolutely outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. Well, you think you've got me, don't you? You extremist. You really do think you've got me. <laughs>